So did you ever lose your data? Oh, who didn't? Or maybe you wanted to clone your cluster. And in this session, I will show you how Slam Manager, the upcoming version 2.0, can help you solve that problem. My name is Michal. I'm a software engineer and team leader for Slam Manager. But uh, let's start from the beginning. Maybe you don't really know what Slam Manager is. And if you don't, uh, Slam Manager is a tool that we're building at Scylla to make the boring database even more boring. So it's uh, supposed to solve all your maintenance uh, problems. So it's like uh, from deployment point of view. It's a centralized server that you would uh, register your cluster with by providing IP address of one of the nodes and then it would discover all of the other nodes and then it would uh, schedule a job to repair all of them, to back up them, and to actually do all sorts of management tasks that you may want to do. To give you just a little bit more perspective uh, where we are and where we're heading, so the current version supports uh, the recurrent repair that is shard aware that you can stop and start that has uh, resilience uh, features built in, such as uh, retries and backoffs, and uh, basically it makes sure that everything is repaired and you can, the repairs do not fail, and if they fail, we would try to, to fix them for you so you don't get pinged uh, with Alert Manager too often. Uh, and of course, it supports the uh, software discovery for Slam monitoring. Now, within a few weeks, we would have uh, the long anticipated 2.0 version that introduces uh, backup. So this, uh, this version would introduce backup to S3 buckets, as I will show you. It also introduces some uh, architectural changes. So before we would uh, use SSH that I would like elaborate uh, in a moment, but now we are switching to HTTPS agents. Um, when we're done with that, we'd probably add much more options to back up your data to. So the technology that we're bringing allows you to virtually, to, to, to back up to virtually any cloud provider you want, FTP, uh, even some strange ones uh, within minutes. We're not doing that because it's like a matter of testing as well, but uh, what we want to do is like, a, we are able to provide like a, wide variety of options uh, for, for backups. Uh, from my, if you're running on Google Cloud, if you're running on Microsoft, uh, that's no problem at all. Maybe you want an FTP or WebDAV or whatever. Um, and then we would move to some, like move Scylla Manager to the next level, but I would uh, elaborate on that by the end of the presentation. So Scylla Manager 2.0. Mm. As you probably know, the Cassandra have their uh, like sidecar project idea. I don't really know what is the, the status of, uh, of this. Uh, but I was uh, here last year. I was talking about Slam Manager 1.4 or 1.2. That was the current version back then. And I was saying that we don't actually need a sidecar. So Scylla Manager talks with Scylla nodes directly over uh, Scylla REST API, which means it does not go over the JMX proxy, so there's like you no know, JMX translation. And there's a challenge with that. So the current version, what you can do uh, to, to, to set it up is like the, you have a possibility to have a, like a direct mode where the API would be exposed on listen address or all interfaces that you have. But this will look like a little bit unsecure. So we had this idea to secure that with uh, SSH. And it was kind of interesting. Uh, so the HTTP, the, with the current version, the HT, uh, SSH server acts as like a reverse proxy. And from technological standpoint, it's quite interesting. So we don't really care if you have this SSH mode or direct mode. So we would use with HTTP client that's uh, uh, handling that uh, for you in a transparent manner. So it would open uh, this connection and set up the, 
the tunnel, so that there would be no actually tunnel. So if you set up ma manually a tunnel, you would uh, get some auxiliary ports, which is not the case here. But now we're dropping that. Uh, we, we have created some SSH tools. So if you are in like a Go development and you're interested in like SSH tools for Go, we open source pretty much what we had in a manager project. Uh, but now it's not uh, being used. Uh, so that's again the deployment uh, view. So SETO is a common line tool for, uh, for Slam Manager. Then we would typically call address localhost and uh, localhost uh, communicates with uh, nodes over SSH or in direct mode. Now, this is quite an interesting idea, but uh, there are some problems with it. Uh, what we did not anticipate is that uh, in the wild, there's like a variety of SSH configuration options that we were underestimated. And in some cases, it's not even possible to set it up in an automated way. So we wanted to make life easier for us and for users. We created a script to set it up, but the script doesn't really, uh, well, it works. So it works pretty well when it works, but uh, it, it was uh, responsible for like 80% of the um, requests from the field to, to do something about it. So users are generally uh, have trouble with setting up uh, SSH connectivity. Mm. Well, it's not their fault. Uh, they have some configuration options that they're not really aware of. So for this reason, uh, in 2.0, we're actually dropping uh, the SSH and we're introducing an agent. So agent has uh, twofold responsibility. So first of all, it's uh, serving as this reverse proxy to Scylla, uh, to Scylla API. And the second one is the, the, the backup. So, uh, so this gives uh, us some uh, benefits over using SSH. Um, I would say that these uh, benefits are in like, like two, two main groups. So first of all, it allows us to control better the impact on SLA nodes. So when you're running a cluster, you probably want to make the maintenance operations as uh, well, lightweight as possible. Uh, and to do that, uh, Slam Manager would, uh, out of the box, uh, uh, use uh, CPU pinning. So in some uh, deployments, uh, they're configured so that one of the cores is uh, left out for like maintenance operations. And Slam Manager can read that configuration and uh, pin to that uh, CPU out of the box. Otherwise, uh, we would uh, use systemd uh, slices Glober blogged about it. Uh, it's a way to use uh, C groups and systemd to separate the uh, workloads, so that uh, the management operation does, does not get into way of uh, like Scylla operations. And the other benefit is like it uh, sort of uh, just works. So uh, we are able uh, to read a lot of configuration options from uh, Scylla configuration API directly. So when an agent starts, it would ask Scylla for uh, uh, for listen address, for instance, to get to know where to where to bind, and also simplifies the uh, uh, the security. So we may have the mutual TLS in pretty much the, the same way as with SSH, but uh, we can also fall back to like bare authentication uh, or something like that is really simple to set up. Uh, now, like I said, we're able to. Uh, back up to almost anything. And that's thanks to integrating our clone in, uh, in the agent. So if you don't know our clone, I highly recommend like checking it out. They, they say it's like, a, they address themselves as everything for cloud storage, and they support uh, virtually anything. It's a pretty um, alive, well, pretty vibrant community. So even before we're able to ship a version to all QA, uh, the, the changes that we introduced to your clone were already changed by the, well, 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 pulled by community, merged and tested, and some people reported some issues, uh, we fixed some of them. Uh, they, they fixed the, some issues uh, themselves, they fixed other issues. So, does it mean that we're uh, well done here? 
Not really. So we had to uh, patch our clone uh, to a certain degree to be able to run it in like a server mode. Most of the changes were, uh, uh, were caused by the fact that the, our clone is pretty much designed as a CLI tool. And they would have uh, some global state that, and this uh, like a design mentality that uh, there's like one op operation running at the same time that we need to resolve. Other than that, we added some features that we are missing, like uh, transfer cons cancellation, which is uh, a huge, that was a huge effort because we needed to go over almost all the, uh, all, all the code to, to change function signatures. And uh, we also did a performance audit and uh, uh, suggested changes that were introduced and also uh, fixed the bug for polluting uh, Unix cache. So if you are reading a huge file, it would uh, be sent to S3, but also it would go to page cache. So similar to incremental compaction strategy, as we read the file, we would free the pages as, as we go, not to load to to match into to, to match into RAM. All right. So uh, what can it do for you? Uh, the strategy that we're using is like a snapshot and upload. Um, <clears throat> you can have a retention policy that would uh, as an integer. So you may say that I want my backup to be uh, repeated every day, but I want to keep only two last days of backup. It has, uh, similar to repair, it has uh, retries built in, but there's like on, on different uh, la layers, levels. Our clone have uh, their own retries. We have some HTTP retries for uh, Scylla server to agent communication. And we also have uh, like backups and scheduler for, for full, full jobs. You can control uh, rate limits. So Basically, all those uh, limits are, I would say, DC aware. So you may specify with uh, glob patterns uh, DCs, and for that DCs, you may specify different uh, parameters. So for one DC, you may specify different rate limit, and for the other DC, uh, and uh, you may also have DC filtering. So you may back up only single DC or a set of them. And uh, again, similar as for uh, repair. We have this, uh, the, the, the flexible key space table selection with glob patterns. So you have this uh, dash K or key space uh, flag that lets you specify the list of patterns that would match uh, or exclude uh, key spaces and tables if you want to back up only uh, one key space or table. Um, all right, so the Key features are like low impact on your node, as well as uh, security. And one, one thing that I want to like, mention here is that uh, similar to like health check and uh, other de design decisions, we are credentials agnostic. So we highly recommend to use IAM roles. So you would assign this IAM role to your node and then it, you would assign this role, the right privilege to the bucket, and that's it. Otherwise, you may specify your AWS credentials on the node directly. All right, so I've, the time is up. I wanted to show you some, uh, well, CLI, uh, how it looks in the CLI. Uh, so basically, uh, that, that's very similar to what we have for Ripper. Uh, and all right. Restore. Uh, so you can uh, you can list uh, you can list your backups as well. And the source of truth is the S3 bucket direct. So we don't read that information from uh, from database. We read it from S3 directly. So in case of like a complete uh, failure, you add just another cluster, and then you can uh, use uh, this tool to connect it to existing S3 bucket and restore from there. All right. Now, uh, we have a grand vision for uh, like Scylla UI, which, would, uh, which means that we would uh, integrate all the components that we have, uh, like, man like uh, manager and monitoring and uh, 
to, to create a single product with a single UI to manage all, all, all syllabus that you have. All right, thanks a lot.